Let's look at the bonding in ethane. And to understand the bonding in ethane, we're going to need to take a look at its Lewis structure. So if we draw the Lewis structure for ethane, we're going to see that there are four areas of high electron density around each one of the carbons. Around carbon 1, we have four areas of high electron density. And around carbon 2, we have four areas of high electron density. And anytime you have four areas of high electron density around a central atom, that is a tetrahedral arrangement. And for a tetrahedral arrangement, the bond angles are 109.5 degrees, and the hybridization, they will be sp3 hybrid orbitals. So we're going to see around each carbon we have four sp3 hybrid orbitals. Now carbon has a valence of four, so we're going to place um, a valence electron in each one of these sp3 hybrid orbitals around each carbon, respectively. Now, we're going to actually create our first sigma bond. What is a sigma bond? It is the overlap of these hybrid orbitals where you have two electrons being shared directly between the nuclei of two adjacent atoms. So let's form our first sigma bond. So the overlap of two of the hybrid orbitals sharing two electrons directly between the nuclei of two, two adjacent atoms is going to give us a sigma bond. So we've just created a sigma bond here. A sigma bond is a single bond. The sharing of two electrons directly between the nuclei of two adjacent atoms is our sigma bond. So we have a sigma here, so anytime in a Lewis structure you see a single line that is a sigma bond. Now let's go ahead and bring in our surrounding atoms. We're going to get three more sigma bonds here on the right. We're going to get three more sigma bonds here on the left. So the overlap of orbitals sharing two electrons directly between the nuclei of two adjacent atoms, this is going to be a sigma bond. So let's bring in those surrounding atoms. Let's bring in those hydrogens. So the hydrogen is going to come in. We're going to get the overlap. And we're going to see with this overlap, we're going to create three more sigma bonds on each side. So our molecule of ethane here now has a total of seven sigma bonds, the sharing of two electrons directly between the nuclei of two adjacent atoms. We're also going to notice that if you only have a sigma bond between those two carbon atoms, and you have freedom of rotation around those bonds. Let's take a look at the bonding in ethylene. And to understand the bonding in ethylene, we're going to need to draw a Lewis structure. So if we take a look at the Lewis structure for ethylene, we're going to see that around each carbon, there are only three areas of high electron density. You may recall in Vesper theory that a double bond actually counts as a single bond. A double bond here is a sharing of four electrons, but in Vesper theory, it only counts as one area of high electron density. So around carbon one and carbon two, we have three areas of high electron density. You may recall in Vesper theory that if you have three areas of high electron density around a central atom, then the type of electronic geometry is going to be trigonal planar with bond angles at 120 degrees. So let's go ahead and take a look at the hybrid orbitals. They're going to be sp2 hybrid orbitals. And carbon has a valence of 4, but these three hybrid orbitals around each carbon are only going to account for three of the four valence electrons. So once we've formed our sp2 hybrids based on the three areas of high electron density, we're now going to place three of the four valence electrons around each carbon. And now if we allow overlap of atomic orbitals, we're going to see that we can form some sigma bonds. So let's go ahead and form our first sigma bond. And you may recall that a sigma bond is the overlap of atomic orbitals where electrons are being shared directly between the nuclei of two adjacent atoms. So we've created our first sigma bond between the two carbon atoms. This is half of the double bond. So this is a sharing of two of the four electrons within the sigma. Let's go ahead and bring in our surrounding atoms, and we're going to get four more sigma bonds. Two on the left is a hydrogen's approach, and two on the right. So we've got a total of five sigma bonds now. But you may recall that there are four valence electrons. Where, where is that fourth valence electron? 
Well, to make our sp2 hybrids, there was one p orbital, one dumbbell that didn't participate in the hybridization. That's where that fourth valence electron is. So if we take a look at where that fourth valence electron is, we're going to see that it's in that unhybridized p orbital. And the overlap of unhybridized p orbitals, that is the sharing of two electrons above and below the plane of two adjacent atoms, creates what is called a pi bond. So to get a double bond, you need the sharing of four electrons. We now see that those four electrons are being shared, two of them directly between the nuclei two adjacent atoms, and the other two within the pi bond above and below the plane. And those two electrons can actually be above or below. So you've got your pi bond, the sharing of two electrons above and below the plane, and your sigma bond in the middle, and this creates your double bond. When you have a double bond, you lose that freedom of rotation, so we no longer have the ability um, for rotation around those carbon atoms. Let's take a look at the bonding in acetylene and we're going to see that there's a triple bond between those two carbon atoms. So if we take a look at the Lewis structure, it's going to highlight that triple bond between those two carbons. But in Vesper theory, this only gets to count as one area of high electron density. Yes, it is a sharing of six electrons, but it only gets to count as one area of high electron density. So what we see around carbon one and carbon two here is going to be two areas of high electron density. You may recall in Vesper theory that when you have two areas of high electron density around a central atom, this is a linear arrangement, 180 degrees. Um, in terms of the bond angles and the hybrids are going to be sp hybrids. So let's take a look at those two sp hybrids around each carbon. You may recall that each carbon has a valence of four and we're going to be able to count for two of those four valence electrons around each carbon by placing them in these two sp hybrid orbitals that you see around each carbon. So once again carbon has a valence of four and we're going to see that two of those four are going to be placed into these sp hybrid orbitals. When the electrons are in these sp hybrid orbitals we can overlap them and start forming some of our sigma bonds. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and overlap the orbitals between the two carbon atoms and we're going to form our first sigma bond and a sigma bond is the sharing of two electrons directly between the nuclei of two adjacent atoms. So that's what we have here between the carbons is the sharing of two electrons directly between them. Let's go ahead and bring in those surrounding atoms and let's create two more sigma bonds, one on the left and one on the right. And you're going to see that we're going to be able to share two electrons between the carbon and the hydrogen atom on the left and the carbon and hydrogen atom on the right. So, so far we have three sigma bonds. But you may recall that right now we're just showing a single bond between the carbons. Where are those extra electrons coming from? Well, each carbon had a valence of four. And when you make sp hybrids, you actually have on each central atom two unhybridized p orbitals. And these unhybridized p orbitals have a dumbbell arrangement above and below the plane of the nuclei of that carbon atom. And that's where those extra two valence electrons are located. So if we allow those unhybridized p orbitals, if we allow them to overlap, what you're going to see is the sharing of four more electrons above and below the plane um, of those carbon atoms. And it creates two pi bonds. Um, so we had two unhybridized p orbitals on each carbon and the overlap of those unhybridized p orbitals gets us our pi bonding. So our triple bond is the sharing of two electrons directly between the nuclei. That would be our sigma bond. And then we also have this, these pi bonds. We have two of them and those came from the overlap of those unhybridized p orbitals. So we have two pi bonds and one sigma bond and that gives us a sharing of the six electrons. Two directly between the nuclei of four above and below the plane of those two carbon nuclei. And if you want to get freedom of rotation here, you're going to have to break those pi bonds um, if you would like freedom of rotation. So this is um, the sigma and pi bonds within the acetylene molecule.